Good morning, everyone. I am Prashant Pillay, Associate Dean for Research and Knowledge Exchange at the Faculty of Science and Engineering at University of Wolverhampton. On behalf of the university and all our project partners here at Cyber Quarters, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you all at the formal opening of Cyber Quarter, the Midland Center for Cybersecurity. I think around four years back, the university thought, cyber is a growing problem. We need to do something about it. What can we do? Uh, there were lots of discussions with the council. And then they decided, let's try and set up a building here at the Hereford Enterprise Zone, which already has a unique defense and sec security sector focus. So the nine million pound cyber quarter is a joint venture between the University of Wolverhampton, Herefordshire Council, it is partly funded through the European Regional Development Fund and the Marches Lep Local Growth Fund. Cyber Quarter aims to become a leading center of excellence in cybersecurity innovation and services. Our mission is to be a single hub for supporting and accelerating cybersecurity innovation and for supporting industry by providing tailored security testing, training, and R&D. The 2,000 square meter building consists of two high-tech training rooms, uh, a state-of-the-art forensics laboratory, uh, R&D facilities that is backed by the University of Wolverhampton's Cyber Research Institute. The Research Institute has about 12 academic staff with expertise around critical national infrastructure security, defense and smart city security, IoT securities, and also the human dimension of security. So the R&D facilities here would include standard things like socks and seams to blockchain test beds, uh, IoT testing platforms, 5G, 6G security testing platforms as well. We also have a bespoke cyber range room, which uh, we will show you around uh, in our tours later, uh, and business space for 16 cyber companies. We want to facilitate creating the, the cyber ecosystem for the West Midlands uh, so that we can bring all our expertise together into this one roof or under this one roof so that it's easier for us to innovate, easier for us to collaborate, and easier for beneficiaries to come and access. So in terms of services, what are we going to offer? Um, we, of course, will start, I mean, we have cyber R&D and consultancy on one side and cyber testing and certifications. So if a business wants to build new cyber security solutions, they can come here. If they have cyber solutions already and wants to, should have switched that off. <laughs> I apologize, but we, we are running a conference at the moment as well. So we do have, um, um, sorry, sorry about that. Um, so cyber product testing um, and certification, as I mentioned also. So when you want to test systems, so you, want to, you want to test products and see whether their security uh, is, is strong enough, uh, uh, what are the vulnerabilities, then of course there are things that, that you can do here as well. Um, we of course would be offering quite a lot of cyber training and cyber training would be one of our key areas of work um, within the center. Um, we have a, a portfolio of, of CPD training uh, that would de be delivered by not just the university academics and, and trainers but also through some of our strategic training partners. We also hope to set up a cyber incubator and accelerator. With 16 companies already based here, we want to try and also facilitate that ecosystem for innovation. So we really want to try and come up with, with, a, with a good incubator and accelerator. And we have ourselves seen the benefits of, of, of such accelerators. Uh, the university has three university spin-outs that were supported by the DCMS-funded Cyber ASAP Accelerator. So that is Cyden, Online Shield, and CyberMind. Uh, and these were incorporated over the last couple of years. And so we see how that, that has benefited us. Uh, and we have two other uh, projects currently going through that accelerator at the moment. And of course, cyber conferences and events. Like I just mentioned, uh, we are running the Cyber Fringe Festival, which also begins today. It's a five-day five long cyber festival with over 50 talks, nearly 400 delegates, keynote speak uh, speakers, panel sessions. Uh, and again, this is the second time running and we'll hopefully be running lots more of those kind of events. Some of them hopefully face to face from here as well. So I would like to start by thanking all our key partners, Herefordshire Council, Marches Lab, Herefordshire Enterprise Zone, Skyland Park, 
Department of Leveling Up Housing and Communities for all their support in, in really bringing this to reality. I can't but not thank uh, the organizations that were involved in actually constructing this beautiful building. Everyone who comes and says the first thing, they come and say, wow, this is a nice building. So organizations like Speller Metcalf, Associated Architects, Hybrid Structures, Kundal, Ramble, Gleeds, Couch Perry Wilkes, and our own universities, estates, and facilities team. So well done to the team. The building's already started winning awards. Uh, it won the Building Project of the Year Award and was joint winners for the Integration and Collaborative Working Awards at this year's Construction Excellence West Midlands Award Fund Night. The university was also shortlisted this year uh, for the Cyber University of the Year Award at the National Cyber Awards. And I hope this is just the beginning of a, a long list of awards that the center will bring in. So again, on behalf of the university, I would like to thank all our partners for bringing our shared dream of cyber quarters to reality. And without any further delay, I would like to request Eric Lewis, Director for Cybersecurity and Digital Identity, DCMS, to please come up and say a few words. Good morning. Um, so uh, I am Erica Lewis. I am the Director for Cybersecurity and Digital Identity at the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport. And you're probably asking why DCMS here? Um, and obviously we're known uh, very much for the work that we do around culture and sport. But actually we are also looking at everything that covers your telephone and your internet. We look at artificial intelligence. Uh, and we're looking at how all of those new technologies have an impact on uh, our lives. And, uh, and obviously, cyber is at the heart of all of this. Uh, so it's great for me today to be here, uh, to be opening such a beautiful, we've, you've said already how beautiful the centre is, but um, uh, such a beautiful centre uh, here in the countryside. Uh, and I'm, I'm extra proud to be here. I just thought I'd share a little bit, because um, uh, this is really my home. I come from Abergavenny. Uh, so I'm very close to home. Uh, I've travelled to Hereford for shopping most of my life. Uh, and when my kids were small, I brought them to the swimming pool. I don't know who, who goes to the Hereford swimming pool. And we always used to come to the uh, frankly hilarious annual pantomime that you have in Hereford. So it's really nice to be here today. Yes. Oh, yes, I did. Behind me. Um, but. I'm not surprised uh, that uh, we've got a forward-thinking uh, tech uh, technology centre here. Um, I think cybersecurity has really uh, come out of the realms of something that the person in IT does and into all of our lives. And I think it's really important to understand it better and that it happens all across the country and not just in sort of small, small nodes in places like London. Um, because it's really important that we all understand what's going on. And I just wanted to start by talking a little bit about the context in which this centre lands, because I think it's a really interesting context as we come out of, uh, hopefully, um, lockdown. There's been an immense change in how we've used technology over the last 18 months. Everybody's seen it. You've taken it home. Uh, and all of that, I think, has really changed the world in which cybersecurity also has to, has to work. And so it's become, I think, ever more important. And all of you, I'm sure, will have heard of the kinds of real world impacts that cybersecurity is beginning to have. Um, there was the Microsoft Exchange software uh, attack, which led to over 30,000 US government and commercial organizations having their emails hacked. Um, you will have heard about the pipeline attack, which happened uh, about six months ago, where it meant that across, uh, across the US, people were paying more for or maybe not even uh, getting fuel for their cars. So these are real world things. Uh, and I think um, one of the ones that uh, really been interesting for me has been uh, things like local authority um, uh, cyber attacks. So I live in Hackney in London uh, now, and Hackney had an attack actually about 18 months ago and is still not recovered. So if you want to buy a house in Hackney or you want to do something around planning, you, you still can't do that. So cyber security has meant, uh, you know, cyber security has become part of, part of our lives. And in fact, 
Um, I was home the other day, and I was talking to my uncle, who uh, has a farm just outside Abergavenny, and he talks about cybersecurity now. And, and I think this is, you know, this is this is why these kinds of centres are, well, one, very successful, but also uh, very important. And I'm sure that all of us over the last few months have had a, a phishing text saying, could we pay some money for some parcel that hasn't arrived? Um, and uh, uh, the National Cyber Security Centre, Chris is coming to speak next, said that um, it had taken down more phishing scams in the last year in the, than in the last three years combined. So um, in terms of more context, let's look at skills. Uh, our um, recent cyber breaches uh, survey shows that 39% of businesses suffered a cyber breach or an attack in the past year. Um, and we know that 86% of the people who are dealing with those breaches, who are the cyber experts in those, in those companies, actually don't perform cyber as their main role or function. So the kinds of training that this kind of centre will do are, is really important to make sure that we've got the right people with the right skills and the right jobs. Uh, we've currently got a shortfall of about 10,000 people for cyber, cyber roles. So this is a place where if you want a job, you really can get one. Uh, and actually, the other things that we're concentrating on are things like diversity. Only 16% of the cyber workforce are women. That number uh, falls to about 3% on, in senior roles. And the, uh, the ethnic minority mix is uh, very similar. So having more diverse centres in more diverse places really helps with that. Uh, and I'm sure that this centre will work alongside the UK Cyber Security Council, which we established last year, who are going to look at professionalising the, 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 the profession so that if you want to be a cyber security expert, you know what kind of training courses you should be going on. If you want to hire a cyber security expert, you know what kind of qualifications they should have. And I think that will make a step change in how um, uh, cyber skills are deployed and used across the economy. So what about new businesses? Well, centres like the Cyber uh, Quarter provide a valuable UK, uh, valuable UK based uh, businesses with innovation opportunities to grow locally. Um, Hereford's a really good place to put this, uh, being the home to the 18th Singles Regiment, uh, the UK Special Forces, which is the largest communications regiment in the British Army. Um, and it's all already the location for over 200 companies in the defence and security uh, um, uh, sector. Uh, and also, uh, as it's got Wolverhampton Cyber Research Institute, it, it makes it a really good place to, to put this kind of enterprise zone. But it's really good for the wider economy because actually the uh, UK cyber security sector is really strong. It's now worth about 8.9 billion. Uh, that's a 56% increase since uh, 2017, and we want this to continue. And we're doing, invest we're doing investment from DCMS in cyber clusters because we feel that they are instrumental in spurring economic growth, um, and that causes that kind of uh, technology-based prosperity to actually smooth across the UK regions. Uh, and who wouldn't want to work here? Um, State-of-the-art building, three cyber labs, I think we're going to get to see them later, um, uh, a great open plan workspace uh, and the chance to network with plenty of other people with lots of really good ideas. Um, so I know my team's really excited to hear about how this uh, centre progresses and I can't wait to hear more as well and I'm really glad to be here today with you. Thank you very much, Erica, for that. I, I, I mean, I, I completely echo all the sentiments from Erica. I think, yes, from a, if you look at the, the way cyber, cyber crime is increasing, there's a lot more required from, from, from us in terms of what we can deliver. So I hope cyber quarters can, 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 can help, not just with, with reskilling, retraining people, but also trying to come up with those ecosystems of getting that innovation in. So thank you very much for that. Um, can I please call next, our next speaker, Chris Ensor, Deputy Director for Cyber Skills and Growth, NCSC. Right, good morning, nice to be here. I'm Chris Ensor, I'm one of the Deputy Directors at the National Cyber Security Centre, uh, and I cartoon what I do as how do I use GCHQ's expertise and brand to build national cyber capabilities, and I'll talk a little bit about what, what that means. Um, it's really actually good to be back here. Um, I came up, I was invited up by Jesse Norman back in 2015, I think it might have been, and he had some 
you know, he presented the ideas for what this centre could be. Um, and it's really good to be back, you know, five years later or six years later to see it actually happen. Um, often you, you hear of visions and you see people have great ideas, but to actually deliver them and to actually, you know, see it really happen is, is pretty impressive. So it's really great. And the, next, the, the best thing will be when it gets onto the, the sat-nav and we can actually get here directly in the car. But fortunately, I'd seen lots of pictures of it. So you could just see it as you came through the buildings. Oh, that's what I want to be. It's just how do you quite get there through all the roads? Anyway, so it is really good to be back. Um, for those of you who don't know, the National Cybersecurity Centre was set up in 2016 by the government to be the place to go for cybersecurity incidents. If you like, a, a one-stop shop for cybersecurity. Uh, and I've been involved in it all that time. In fact, my, my time goes back to GCHQ back in 1989, so well before we even invented the term cybersecurity. Um, but actually, that's what we've been doing all that time, is how do we protect ourselves in cyberspace? And we have become much, much more, depend much more dependent on the internet for everything we do now. That's, that's kind of where our way of life is. You know, online banking, we book hotels, we book, book our, you know, dinners and all that kind of thing, it's all online now, so we're so dependent on it. And so it's so important that we now have the knowledge, skills and capabilities and the tools, if you like, to protect ourselves in cyberspace. And places like this ensure that, you know, we have the skills, we have the knowledge, um, our families have the knowledge, our businesses have the knowledge, and ultimately the whole of the UK has the knowledge to protect our way of life because we are just so dependent on cyberspace today. And I think this centre can make a massive contribution to all three of those things, to the knowledge, the skills, and sort of the tools that we're going to need. And what I hope is, particularly for the companies that come and work here and get involved with it, is that one day I'll see them at the, our NCSC for startups. So this is an initiative we've been running in Cheltenham for the last five years since 2017. Um, we've had 48 companies come through it and, and about half a dozen of them have relocated to the area. And the whole idea is how do we marry up the expertise that sits in the donut in Cheltenham with those small companies, with the ideas those companies have. And so it's been a really successful initiative and, and many of them have, we've raised over 100 million between them and over 500 jobs created. And that's what happens, that's what magic happens when you bring together small, agile organisations with world-class expertise, which is what we have in the donut. So I really hope that one day some of the companies that come through here, you know, will come into the programme and we'll work more closely with them. So that's one of the initiatives. But also, you know, academia plays a massive part in it. It actually defines the foundation on which we, you know, we develop our new capabilities. So whether that's developing skills, training, education, or whether it's research, you know, the universities have a massive part to play. And over the years, we've identified 19 academic centres of excellence in research right around the country, and also nine academic centres of excellence in education. And it's really great to see Wolverhampton University being involved in this, reaching across into the marches to provide its expertise and support. And for our academic centres of education, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for universities that want to reach out to the communities around them and support them. Cybersecurity isn't everywhere. You know, cybersecurity sits in, in small clusters often, or at least the deep expertise does right around the country. And what we want to encourage is those, those areas of expertise to reach out around them, to the school, to the colleges, to the businesses around them. So it's really great to see what you've done, you know, you've done here to produce that partnership across the marches. So I really wish all those involved in this centre all the very best and I hope to see at least some of the companies that get involved in this be part of the NCSE for Startups programme where we can work much more closely together. So well done. It's great to be back and see it actually delivered. And good luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And I'm, I'm sure we'll have lots of companies that will be based here and innovation coming out of here that will come into the, the, the accelerator there. So thank you very much for that. Uh, can I please now call upon Councillor David Hitch Hitchner, uh, leader of the council, please to come and say a few words. Uh, Prashant, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, this is a, a tremendous example of partnership uh, working in, in the county. Uh, we have the, the LEP and Prashant uh, with the university and also the council working together 
uh, looking to try to uh, create opportunities for uh, better paid employment in the area. Uh, and I think this presents a great opportunity. I also uh, just wanted to, um, to thank Erica in particular for coming. Um, I've been a, a, a leader of the council for two and a half years, and I'm so dependent on the officers uh, providing me with all the words to, to say at events like this, but they haven't on this occasion. But, uh, but for, uh, Erica will have written, what, if a minister had come, uh, exactly what Erica has said is that's what they'd say, but they'd add some politics. Now, the great thing is that by having Erica coming, she is the one who's really doing things. She is the one who can really facilitate getting this project really up and running. And so I'm tremendously excited that you came. Um, and you, your knowledge is quite clear because there aren't that many people who say, you know, 18th signals that are even here. Most people don't know that. They talk about the SAS, but they won't talk about 18th signals. And it's people from 18th signals who have the, the knowledge, the capacity, the understanding that we want those kind of people to come here and set, set up business here, continue to live in Hereford, and, and help the, the region in its prosperity. I think this building is absolutely fantastic. I've been here, I think, three times. The first time was with a shovel in hand. It was about a week after I'd been elected. I'd had nothing whatsoever to do with this building or the project or anything like that. So I must give credit to the previous administration for working on that. Um, but I don't want to say that too, too loudly. Um, uh, but uh, it, it, it is a long-term, it's a long-term plan, a long-term project. Um, it's just that Nicola Goodwin is here and she might be quoting me later on. Um, so, so I've been here, uh, I think, three times. The first time was with a shovel. The second time uh, was when it was tipping it down with rain and the roof had not been sealed. And you were in here and there was water dripping down. And, and this is a wooden building. And I was thinking, well, hang on a minute. You know, all this, this wood is going to get soaked with water. But I'm told it's all very, very well designed and built. And it's just a fantastic building now. Uh, and it fits so well with our county vision of, of using natural resources, the Timber Technology Centre, which is just being built by the same people who've built this building. So I just want to give a round of applause and thank you ever so much to Spell and Metcalf for a fantastic effort and uh, welcome everybody uh, this morning. Thank you. I do remember those three times that you visited and, and we've walked around in the rain and, and it was a great time, but now it's all, it's all reality, so it's, it's, it's an excellent day for us. Uh, I do want to again thank Herefordshire Council for all their support right from day one, you know, over the years, making sure that we, we do keep moving ahead uh, and, and even till now. So uh, this is a, is a true joint venture with, with the Council. So thank you very much for your support throughout. Um, can I get a, can I please ask our next speaker, Mandy Thorne, CEO Marches Slap, to come and say a few words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can I say it's a huge pleasure to be here today, especially as I'm also originally from this area. I attended Hereford Sixth Form and uh, spent many a year um, going round Hereford looking at various pubs and restaurants in my teenage years. Um, but I am just blown away by this um, magnificent facility and to be able to be here for the official opening is a real honour. And I'd also like though to um, add my welcome on behalf of the Marches Local Enterprise Partnership to this building in an amazing location, Skylon Park. You've already heard from our other speakers just what a trailblazing project this centre is and the range of opportunities that the centre offers, plus being located in such a unique environment. It's just such a great, great building. I'm so excited by it. The centre firmly establishes the Marches and Hereford in particular as a true centre of excellence in the cyber sector and as a natural home for the sort of dynamic innovative and forward-thinking businesses that will drive our economic growth across the marches for years to come. So I do want to pay tribute again to the exceptional work of our partners at the University of Wolverhampton, at Herefordshire Council, and to the Enterprise Zone team, led by Mark, who's there on my right, in bringing this centre to fruition. Everybody involved has worked tirelessly to deliver a landmark development that will not only help to protect the nation online, but it will also act as a beacon for further investment in our beautiful Marches area. 
As the chair of the March's LEP, I am naturally extremely proud of the role that my organisation has played in developing this centre. The LEP, for those of you who don't know, is a business-led partnership that brings together the best of the private, public and academic sectors, and it is responsible for the economic well-being of the whole of Herefordshire, Shropshire and Telford and Rekin. We invested over £3 million of growth deal funding to help bring this centre to life. As you can imagine, we don't spend, we don't allocate this money lightly. We did allocate the money to this centre because we recognise the importance that this centre will deliver a range of strategic benefits, not just for our region, but more widely across the country. This centre makes good our commitment as a LEP to support innovation, to embrace the latest technologies and to deliver high value jobs and opportunities to our communities. It is physical proof of our determination to develop an economy that seizes opportunities presented by the fast-moving pace of technology changes, technological changes. And this centre is the embodiment of our ambition to build on the March's key strengths to develop centres of excellence that have both national and global significance. The centre also supports the LEP's vision of encouraging our best talent to bring their pioneering ideas to life here in their home region, rather than feeling that they have to move elsewhere to further those ambitions. The office incubator and accelerator space here can act as a real focal point around which local talent can build the enterprises and the wealth of the future. And the Cyber Centre also reflects the ambition we have for our enterprise zone here at Skylon Park. To date, the LEP has invested over £18.8 million into Skylon Park to create a truly dynamic business community. And the only one of its type in the country which has a focus on cyber, defence and security sectors. And when you look around you at these surroundings, I hope you agree that our work is paying off. These investments are all part of a strategic plan to create an economy that's vibrant, future-proof and creates new wealth for all of our communities to share. By doing so, in retaining our talent and driving up the value of jobs, we can create that virtuous circle that will serve us for so many years to come. But there's an even more important principle that this centre embodies. When LEPs were created 10 years ago, we were given a mission to build new relationships between the business community, the public sector and academia. Many assumed that such a mission was absolute folly, it couldn't be done. And lazily they believed that many of the, many of the old stereotypes that suggest the public sector lacked imagination, the business community was only interested in profits for itself and academics lived in an altogether different planet. Well, look around you. This is conclusive proof of just how wrong those naysayers were. This centre is by no means an isolated example of what the LEP has delivered. Over the last decade, we have helped directly to put over £140 million worth of investment into this region, and we've attracted more than an additional £200 million in match funding. Our work is well on the way. We've created over 18,000 jobs we will be supporting 12,000 more learners to develop their skills, and we've invested over £31 million in pioneering innovative projects. Our business support service, the March's Growth Hub, has helped over 52,000 businesses with vital advice, support and access to funding since it was launched in 2015. So yes, they're impressive figures, but there is so much more to the let than that. We've invested in flagship forward-looking developments, such as the restoration of the Shell store just down the road. If you've not been there, go. It's incredible. The launch of Enmite, a unique new way of delivering technology and engineering training in Hereford, and in the COVID recovery programmes, such as the new tourism initiative dreamt up by Frank, who's in front of me here, for Herefordshire and led by the Business Board. We're also driving the development of low carbon technologies across the region. You may have seen a report just last month that shows that both Shropshire and Herefordshire are UK leaders in the use of anaerobic digesters to generate power and we punch considerably above our weight when it comes to the use of solar power. 
This doesn't happen by chance, but through the strategic leadership that brings people together to work in collaboration. We work with partners who, to offer businesses help to drive down their own emissions and improve their energy efficiency. And we also continue to work to ensure that this region's digital infrastructure is fit for purpose. And we've heard how important that is. But thanks to our partnership with our fantastic education providers, our learners are now developing those new skills that align with the needs of business, while those people that face the biggest barriers to employment are also being helped to make the most of their ability. This all helps to further strengthen this region, which has a very strong sense of place. It has a can-do attitude and a growing confidence in itself. And you see this, that confidence embodied in the centre here today. I believe it's a testament that by forging great partnerships and working together, we achieve far much more than if we had acted alone. My thanks for listening to me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning here and I look forward to a chance to talk to you in person. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Apologies for the CEO, <laughs> Chair of the Marches Lab. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we, we can't deny the, the, the huge impact labs have had on the region, uh, and especially Marches area, where we, we've seen a huge range of projects up and down the area. Uh, we've been involved as a university on various one of them, so thank you again uh, for all the support. We would not have been here without the funding, so thank you again for that. Um, and last but not least, can I please invite Mark Pierce from Skyland Park. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome, welcome you all to Skyland Park, Hereford Enterprise Zone. On behalf of my board, I'm delighted to see so many of my board members here today. Um, the zone covers over 110 acres of employment land and is developing out fast. Uh, Mandy touched on some of the projects that are happening. We've already welcomed over 60 businesses onto the zone, employing over 1,100 people. And I'm sure you'll have hopefully seen some of those investments as you uh, wend wended your way to the, uh, to the building through your sat nav this morning. Um, Enterprise Zone Board is looking for investments from sectors that are strong and growing in the local economy. Uh, defence and security is one of those sectors. As befits our location in the Cyber Valley with the UK Special Forces, the 18th Signals Restaurant, uh, in Hereford, GCHQ in uh, Cheltenham, and Kinetic and the new project Beta Den in, in Malvern. So we've got a real strength uh, of assets in this locality. And we're already home to a number of businesses that have grown out of all those institutions. We've been working on this project every step of the way since the possibilities were started to be discussed back in 2015, 2016. So I would also like to thank the commitment shown by the partners and funders to bring that idea to fruition. We see this investment as hugely important in raising the profile of the local cyber sector and cluster, extending business networks, particularly through the Midlands and the Marches, helping existing businesses to reach their full potential and to see the creation of many, many more businesses. The board has also reserved the three acre plot opposite um, the centre for larger cyber businesses who want to be associated with and use the facilities of the cyber quarter. And we've already seen interest in that business space. The construction itself has created a lot of momentum and interest and we're, we're hearing from a lot of business interest who want to be part of the story. Finally, on behalf of my board, I'd like to wish the Cyber Quarter all the very best with its future endeavours. We will be supporting its work all every step in the way. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Mark. Um, I mean, from, a, from an enterprise zone point of, point of view, a, a zone that already has a huge focus around defense and security, 
we had to be here. And, and we work very closely with Mark and, and all the other businesses which are on this zone. And already that is something that is what's already delivering quite a lot because we've already got quite a few cyber companies within the area, quite a few defense companies who are looking at cyber products. And that is exactly what we wanted uh, when, we, what, when we were thinking about coming here. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, a lot more innovation coming out of, a lot more collaboration coming out of all of these, these discussions and uh, we're really happy to be here on the zone. Thank you again for all your help and support. Um, that brings us to the end of all our speeches today. So thank you again, every one of you for coming here, taking the time out of your precious diaries to, to come for this formal opening event. Um, we would like to invite you all for some refreshments at the back and then we'll be shortly starting some tours of the building, so we'll make some announcements shortly. So thank you again, everyone, for coming. <laughs>